Could have been a little less strange that night. I was feeling down and my mood wasn't right. AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. It's the Matt McNeil Show. I'd... I, at least once a week, at least once a week, people ask me how Nancy Nelson's doing. And uh, if you want to find out yourself, just go to the Jen Hassan Dinner Theater and say hi to her. She's over there many nights uh, as the hostess over there. Uh, and I highly encourage you to go see Beautiful, the Carol King musical. That's over there right now. Uh, she is kind enough to step back with me today, talk to us today about Pitch People, the movie that she did 25 years ago. Uh, about the infomer- infomercial people and and how to make a good pitch. She's, of course, featured in it. They're going to be having a special screening of it tomorrow night where Nancy's going to be there. We'll do a quick, uh, brief uh, question on and answer with the audience. She's kind enough to talk about a whole bunch of things today. Hi, Nancy. Maddie, you're so adorable. I'm kind enough. You're my friend, and I get to enjoy you every day on the air. And all the years I was there... I got to see you come in wearing your shorts much too early in the spring. And um, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't miss AM 950. I don't miss you and all of the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful listeners who believe in our democracy and believe in our America and how hard we have to fight for it now. I miss the audience. I miss you. Hello, my friend. Hello. It's so, but there is a place you got, you're over at uh, Chan Hassan dinner theater. I, I was over there. Like I said, Friday, I was there last year for prom when you guys had that there. And it's just, if you want, if you want to say hi to her, she's over there on a lot of the nights. Uh, <laughs> you, if people can swing on by and say hi to Nance. I'm an MC over there, and, and I get to greet people as they come in. And as you see, I go up on stage and I talk to them a little bit before um, the show starts. And I absolutely love it because the job is to be with people. And then every now and then they um, drop us in. Don Shelby and I have had three runs of a two-person show there called Love Letters. We just concluded again in February. And we're lucky. So far, it keeps selling out, so they're going to bring it back again. Nice. And so it's just a happy place. But, man, I miss AM 950 radio. I oh. miss it. I miss it. I miss it. I miss seeing you every day. You, I, I've, I've got – she gave me a picture years ago that she autographed, and I've got it up on my wall in my house. I'm never taking it down because I just – working with you was – literally like working with sunshine it was oh, you know it, it was just so bright and happy and you couldn't it, you, you cannot have a bad day when nancy nelson is around you just cannot well i think i we clearly have a mutual admiration society going yes. here and isn't that lovely well <laughs> Thank you so much. uh hey let's take a quick minute if i can since you're over at chan hassan dinner theater you uh, you said you said to me as I went in on Friday night to go see beautiful the Carol King musical you you said you're going to like this and holy cow that's a hoot over there you guys that, that that is just a great performance and that lead singer Monet over there who takes on the role of Carol King she is absolutely brilliant she really is uh, uh, she came in well, she's out she lives in California came in out of New York she had done one of the Broadway tours. And the whole cast is so strong. And an interesting thing, Maddie, um, when they started to talk about it and, and suggested people start buying tickets, there was some pushback because people thought it's just going to be a concert of Carol King music. Well, it's a big, giant production. As you know, there are 29 people on stage. Yes. And, and, and she was, I mean, she still is alive, of course, but a musical genius. She wrote her first giant hit uh, when she was 17 years old, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow? And for about 10 or 12 years, she never sang. She wrote for the Drifters and the Diamonds and the Shirelles up on the roof. Um, just endless numbers of songs, and then finally made her Tapestry album. And, of course, that put her yeah. into national prominence as Carol King, not just a writer Carol King. You know, and, and, and that was my mom listened to that on repeat over and over again when I was a kid. That's why I love Carol King. Here's tapestry. The, yeah, the yeah, yeah, album yeah. was Tapestry. Yeah. We all had it. We all wore them out. We all bought a second one and a third one. <laughs> <laughs> the the thing that works about that because you're right. I think that sometimes people think that these these musicals that are basically using established music are just kind of concerts, and they're not. And as a matter of fact, what I can say about Beautiful the Carol King Story, because over the last two years, I have seen four total musicals where they brought in music that was pre-used 
and then either wrapped a story around it or fit the music into a story, that sort of thing. By far, Beautiful by Carole King is the best of those because it doesn't try to force the songs into a storyline or kind of make a contrived story. It just basically tells the story of her writing these songs and then lets the songs play out in historical timeline, which is the absolute best way to do that. And it's, so it shined better than the other versions of plays that I've seen that have tried that. Yeah, I agree with you. And of course, uh, it's been shows like that have been hugely successful on Broadway. And then, uh, and then it comes um, to a run like at Chanhassen Dinner Theaters, which, by the way, Maddie, we can be so proud of it. Uh, it is one of the preeminent professional theatrical companies in yep. the nation. Yep. And um, the reputation is strong. And I'm just, I'm just thrilled to be there. And I couldn't believe it when the two of you came walking through the door there. And said, There's Maddie. <laughs> and yes, I call him Maddie. And your wife always told me I was, I'm the only person you've ever allowed to call you Maddie. You I are. don't know that you've ever allowed me. I just do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One last thing. Jen has an interest in a gender theater. I had a fantastic steak there. I will say that Friday night. That was that was some good eating. So go see Beautiful, the Carol King musical over at Chanhassen Dinner Theater. Now, let's put that aside. A lot of people know you. Uh, I, I know you as Bunny from Airport. But oh uh, we wouldn't watch that. My, my wife loves watching Airport just to see you in it. It is brilliant. I love that. Maddie, you're so cute. My gosh, the, the dinosaurs were alive when I was in that movie. <laughs> well, that, was, that was just Dean Martin. That was just Dean Martin. Uh, anyway, that's, yeah. uh, but, that's right. She, like, she didn't want to see me. She wants to watch Martin. Good for her. No. The, pitch people, you, you, there was an art form. And, and you and I have talked about this. I don't know how much we talked about it on air. But there was an art form to what happened in the 90s with... The old style, um, the, 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 the pitch, the barker, the selling, changing that and fitting that into the cable TV nation that we had where you and many other people became kind of a host for this infomercial and you made I, what is really somewhat iconic television for the time, something that I miss watching because some of those were just fantastic. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that because it had its time and the time is over. Uh, you know, the television shopping networks got bigger. Amazon came in. But, um, yeah, it, it really, they they call it the subtitle of the movie is the second, or pitch people, the second oldest profession in the world. And um, they, they begin, you know, by talking about um, for as long as man has been alive, they have been selling something. Somebody standing on a corner on a wooden box selling, buy this, buy this, buy this. And they tracked it. They know it happened a lot in Rome. Uh, they tracked it across Europe, people doing it. It came to the United States. Probably, Maddie, I would think one of the first uh, things that we can identify in terms of pitch salesmen would be those stories that we hear of the flim flam men who had the medicine wagons yeah. and they sold snake oil in town and then they got out of town before people knew it wouldn't work. And then it went on street corners and flea markets and people like Ed McMahon and Ron Popeil made their bones selling on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. And then who hasn't bought something at the state fair, a chopper, a yeah. plastic thing, a, a, a mop. And somebody said, you know, it really works at these state fairs. Let's do this on television and we'll combine information because it'll be a half hour format with a commercial. So we'll show you, we'll entertain you, we'll tell you all about it and then we'll tell you how you can buy it. The infomercial. And I was there at the right time when that happened and I had a heck of a fun ride with yeah. it. I think you probably and I and I probably and I don't think this is wrong, you you were with Foreman in probably the most popular of all of them the george foreman grill because that one played regular and often and as many people have said of all the products that were ever advertised on infomercials the george foreman grill i still have one at home it works it's a good thing and maddie can, i still use mine every day yeah it's it's a fan <laughs> yeah. it was that was the one that would you agree that that's probably the most popular of all the infomercials that happened at the I time i think so yeah i think so people of course loved 
seeing George Foreman, and the product was so great. Yeah. And um, and do I have to tell you what an utter thrill it was to do the show with him? And he couldn't have been nicer. Couldn't have been nicer. The the flip side of that, uh, and and how things don't always work. It's in the movie. I did a show with Ed McMahon, and of course you would automatically think whatever that was, it would have been a huge success. Well, Ed had cholesterol problems, and. Uh, couldn't his doctor said you cannot have fried food he found somebody to create the original air fryer so he could have fried foods without you know doing the grease part of it we did the show tried to introduce the american public to an air fryer and even with ed mcmahon on it 25 years ago it tanked fast forward and everybody has an air fryer in their kitchen today what, what what do you think? What happened there? Do you I mean just did it not resonate, or is it? The, is the, it... The, the, you know, people just it was a bridge too far for them. Mm. No, you can't have good fried chicken if you don't have it in the deep fryer. No. Um, now, of course, it, the, then they started to talk about it, educate it, but it's so interesting how timing, even with something that is now such a huge thing, Ed McMahon with his pull couldn't make a success of the show but i'll tell you um i picked up the phone and this voice said nancy this is ed mcmahon i about went down to the floor <laughs> <laughs> Did you oh, think- hi, mr. hi mr mcmahon how are you nancy i'm oh, i was just great did you think you had won Publishers Clearinghouse at that point? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, that's so cute that you say that. I think I said that to him. <laughs> I, I said, Mr. McMahon, are you calling? He, and, and he said, no, I'm calling you because I want to do a show with you. And I said, oh, you do. I, I just was so excited. <laughs> uh, you did. Okay, I just watched Wrath of Khan, uh, Star Trek Wrath of Khan with the immortal Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> On there oh, yeah. as as Khan, yeah. which is as good as it gets, and, and really one of the best science fiction movies of all time. You did one with him. What was the infomercial you did with him? It was another one that tanked. Um, it was a, it was um, a, a cook a cooker fryer thing, and he had had a friend who put it together, and he wanted to do an infomercial with it. And um, for whatever reason, who knows, it doesn't click. Mm-hmm. It maybe didn't click because people didn't like the product enough, although it was fabulous. Often they didn't click because there wasn't a good time buy. You can't just buy time. Yeah. you got to buy time in the right place at the right times. And poor Mr. Montalban, um, part of the show, I had to take this steak off the grill thing and cut it and hand it to him. And I cut a piece that was too big and, and put, put it in his mouth. And he stood there chewing and chewing. <laughs> and he finally said, we have to stop. She gave me too big a piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I would have loved to. It would be, that would be an all-time classic moment in my life. I fed Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> Another thing you would love, Maddie, because again, you know, they, they were, they're bigger than life. They were crazy. They were silly. They were financial goliaths all over the planet. And so naturally there was a lot of fun making. And one night I'm sitting there watching, I, I had done a show for Royal Diamond Cookware. It would not end. It ran for three years. We sold a bajillion pots and pans and the demonstrator on it. I was the sidekick to a man named John Parkin, red bow tie, red suspenders. Yeah. And Nancy, this is so Nancy, this cook, Nancy. And he was just over the top. I'm watching Saturday Night Live and there they are doing a skit of this infomercial with one of the SNL guys as um, John Parkin and Helen Hunt, the actress, as me. <laughs> and they and they had my hairdo, they had the same blue dress I had on, and it was, oh, John, that's so wonderful. Oh, oh. And it was just brutal. It was brutal. <laughs> and it was this Hysterical. And it was, you know, how honored can you be? Who cares if they trash you? You're on SNL and they're, you know, doing a parody on you. I called Monday morning and asked to speak to Lauren Michaels, the producer of SNL. I had met him before. And um, she said, well, what is this about? And I said, well, Helen Hunt and you folks did a, a, a skit on Saturday night. And and it was about me and John Parkin. And I'd like to talk to um, Lauren. Just a moment, please. She came back, took a long time. I am transferring you to legal. I uh-huh. said, what? 
I don't, I don't want to talk to, I want to talk to Lauren. Well, if you have any concern about having been parodied in an infomercial in our skit, I'm connecting you to legal now. They thought I would call to sue them. And I just called to say, thank you, Lauren. And I never did get to talk to him. And I told them, I'm like, no, I don't want to sue you. Thanks for doing it. <laughs> they, okay, so of the ones that you have not done, here's a good question for you. Of the infomercials that you did not do, what was uh-huh. the one that you saw that you said, you know what, that's a good one? Um, oh, that is interesting, isn't it? There were so many good ones. There were a lot of really good skincare ones. Um, oh, that I think were good that I wish I had done. I, Matt, you, you, you put me in a corner. Well, I don't have a good answer. Well, That's how good a question it is. It can't be answered. <laughs> well, the, the great thing about the people like yourself that did them is I think to a point, a lot of it was the character of the individual, like the, the slap chop and the sham wow guy. He worked, oh, he worked, he worked in those ads when he did those. And, you know, and Popeil was, you know, when he had his rotisserie, you know, you know, you know, you get, you got out there and you could sell it. I think that's what made some of those work. I mean, the, the one Ron Popeil one where he did the rotisserie oven, that one was on for like five years. I mean, that was. Set it and forget it. Yeah. Set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. The first show I did with Ron um, was the food dehydrator. And that was another one that ran forever. Yeah, and ever. it did. It did. Uh, I did a few. I did a few early on with Ron, kind of back to back, and then did not want to do any shows with Ron anymore. Um, but uh, he he was a piece of work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, he so so the twenty fifth anniversary of Pitch People. It's at Imagine Willow Creek. Starting tomorrow night, 7 p.m., it's got one airing every day for the next week, starting Friday night, right? That's right. And, and um, tomorrow night, um, the producer who put all this together and contacted me said, Nance, how about if you, will you go over and do a Q&A after the performance at 7 o'clock tomorrow night? So if the show's up at 7, it's down at 8.30. And if anybody is actually there, um, uh, it, you know, because a lot of people could care less about a documentary. But I'll tell you, it's really fun, Maddie. It is really a trip down memory lane and all these guys and all the things they did. And there's a lot of laughs in it. It's really fun. So come. Yeah, I I do the Q&A after the 7 o'clock show. um, And then on Saturday and Sunday, it's at noon. Monday through Thursday, it's at 5 p.m. And then it's out of here and on its way to, I think, San Francisco next. Well, and a reminder, the only day you can do the Q&A with Nancy is tomorrow night, 7 p.m. at, once again, Willow Creek. And that's a 7 p.m. showing there. Nance, um, you know, by the way, I love your bird in the background. How old is that? Oh, dog? no. Oh, oh, no. I thought I went far up in the other room. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's a, no oh, your no. bird is fantastic. Oh, no. The people must think, no, you're, no, I'm not calling you from the zoo. That is Peppy. That is Peppy, a double yellowhead Amazon parrot that Billy brought home in 19. 19- 73. Peppy was five years old then. And so this year, Peppy is 56. And he and I have lived together for 51 years. And I promise you, the second I hang up the phone, he stops hollering. It's like a toddler. <laughs> well, it's, I love it because it does to a point sound like you're calling us from the compound on a tropical island. I'm just going <laughs> to. Why didn't you? Why didn't you say Nancy and get the bird? Oh gosh, Daddy, why did you let me do this whole interview with that? Because I love it. Because <laughs> you are sunshine, my dear. You are absolute <laughs> sunshine. And I'm happy as loud. <laughs> well, it is. It is daylight. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Maddie, thank you, darling. Thank you so much. And hey, AM50 listeners, I know how much you value Matt, and you know how special. He is and man alive we got to hit the streets we've got to do everything we can we got to save this we're in big trouble aren't we man well we basically we need we we're thank we're so grateful for everyone that stepped up and helped out we got the calendar the latest latest calendar out there and there's a lot of ways you can help out uh stop by the chanhassen dinner theater on on many nights you can see nancy there go see beautiful the musical it's fantastic over there and then of course and listen to maddie every single day well thank you ma'am uh pitch people at the Ima- imagine willow creek tomorrow night 7 p.m with the q a afterwards with nance nance as always you are welcome on my show anytime you want to come by my friend thanks my friend peppy say goodbye to everybody at am 950 <laughs> <laughs> oh man goodbye darling take care nancy nelson <laughs> 
Uh, we've, well, I'll tell you what, we'll come back, wrap up the show. It's the Matt McNeil Show on AM 950.